Hi, my name is Yvonne Mulhern. I work at Dick Smith Library, and we're going to talk about how to network with Twitter. Uh, after that, I'm going to pass this on to Rachel from Career Services, and she's going to tell you all about LinkedIn. All right, so why would you want to use Twitter when you are looking for a job? According to OmnicoreAgency.com, 22% of adults use Twitter, 92% of companies use social media for recruiting, and 54% of companies use Twitter. And you've probably heard this or something like this already, which is that 75% of hiring managers check social media. And that's why you often hear, you know, be careful what you post and watch out for digital dirt and all that kind of thing. So what Twitter lets you do that not all uh, social media outlets let you do is you can find accounts related to your field. You can participate in Twitter chats with industry professionals and well-known people in your field, uh, learn about conferences as they're going on. And you could also read tweets only from accounts related to your field. So if you followed a bunch of people from school, you don't wanna unfollow them, maybe hurt their feelings. You can fix your account so that you only see tweets from people that are in your career field or only from accounts that are tweeting out jobs. So something you might wanna consider is using a separate account. Now, not everybody does this and it can be kind of a pain, you know, to have a personal account versus a professional account. This just really depends on your personality and what you like tweeting about. If you find yourself tweeting about politics a lot, then I would definitely recommend a separate account. If you're only going to use it for career stuff, then you're probably okay with just one account. If you do have a personal account, um, go ahead and lock it down. Uh, just in case if you're tweeting about, you know, your weekend or things that aren't related to careers, things that, you know, might be misinterpreted, even if it's just a picture of you with your friends, uh, if it's something that you don't want a potential employer to see, then yeah, you definitely want to have a um, private or personal account. If you're just starting out with Twitter um, and you want to use it for professional purposes, go ahead and put your full name, put a picture, um, otherwise, keep it separate. So this is Dr. Jennifer Edwards. She's a communications professor here on campus, and she has a really good bio page. You'll see here, um, she's got her picture. She's looking really excited, her full name uh, and her email. So if you want to contact her, you can. Uh, the first few words of her bio, searching for grants and partnerships. So right away, she lets you know why she's there. She's, uh, she's not messing around. She's there for a specific reason. She wants to find people to collaborate with. It tells you what she does. She's a professor of communication. She's a director of the World Communication at Texas Social Media Research Institute. It gives you her locations and it gives you her website. So if you had never heard of her before and you think, oh, you know, she sounds interesting. Maybe I want to collaborate with her. You could contact her. You can go to her website. You could look at her tweets, you know, find out a little bit more about her before you contact her. And there's no mystery here. You don't have to wonder, oh, well, I wonder what she's researching. Just go to her website or go ahead and contact her. It tells you where she is. And uh, it's really straightforward. So Twitter works well with fields that involve communications. I'm not gonna say uh, don't use it if you're not in those fields, but these are the fields that we tend to see the most on Twitter, uh, education, lots of teachers, K to 12 uh, and college, reporting, writing, you'll see a lot of journalists on Twitter, um, internet, information technology, people that are doing research in those areas. And you'll also see people that are in PR and in marketing. So if any of these areas are things you're interested in, I would definitely recommend a Twitter account. And if you're feeling a little intimidated, you know, you can start out by lurking and seeing what other people are saying and then gradually insert yourself into the conversation if you want. But even if you end up not tweeting anything, you can still find out about jobs, find out about conferences, uh, find out what the latest conversations are and kind of find out the current events uh, in your field, you know, what's new. So something you want to do when you're on Twitter is find good accounts to follow in your field. So Google your industry plus Twitter hashtags. Um, 
higher education Twitter hashtags, public relations, best Twitter hashtags for engineers. Uh, pretty much any job, I'm not going to say every single job, but most jobs are going to have a hashtag that you can look up. So just kind of scroll through the accounts. Uh, try to look for accounts that look like Dr. Edwards. In other words, uh, they have the person's picture, uh, they have a website, they tell you what the person's profession is, and you know right away that that's going to be a professional account. Uh, it doesn't mean they're never going to tweet about their cat, but it does mean that a lot of their tweets are going to have to do with jobs and information that will hopefully be helpful to you. So find out if they're talking about trends, are their tweets interesting, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so if you put a field such as engineering in there, it'll come up with accounts. You can click on people and go ahead and start following anyone that looks reputable. Uh, UCLA, I would definitely follow if I was engineering. Berkeley, uh, that's a well-known school. Same thing with Northwestern. And if you're not sure, you know, just follow who looks good. You could always unfollow them later. It's not a big deal. Okay, so Twitter lists is a really good feature. What it does is it lets you put the tweets that come up on your feed into different categories. So if you're following friends or Tarleton accounts, you can make a list that just says Tarleton. Every time you wanna know what's new at Tarleton, you click on it and it'll show you all the Tarleton accounts. Um, similarly, you could do one for PR or one for education. And anytime you want to know what groups or professionals are saying, you click on there and it'll show you everyone's tweets from that group. You don't have to see any tweets that you're not interested in. So something you'd want to do on a desktop or laptop is go to your profile. You're going to see three dots, click on them, and then you can start creating lists uh, such as marketing or education or whatever your field is, and then you can start filling it up with people. You can also look at other people's lists. That's a really good shortcut. And if they're well known and they're on lists, probably it's a good list with other well known people. So you can just hit subscribe and you don't even have to make a list if you don't want to. So this is a list of people that uh, work in the library profession. You can see here, they've got their names. Uh, these are names of lists, lists of library Twitter, uh, lists of people at Tarleton, lists of people that have to do with libraries. And so that's how you can divide up your account. Uh, you can divide it up by profession. You can even divide it up by hobbies if you want to, or Maybe there's some actors on a TV show you like, you could make up a list for them, you know, whatever you want to do. So something you can do uh, to get more familiar with lists is you would go to one of these accounts, you would go to view lists under the three dots, and then it's going to give you all the lists that that person is on and all the lists that that person has made. So you could go ahead and subscribe. And uh, the whole point of this is so you don't get overwhelmed by tweets. Um, let's say you're following 150 people. That can be a lot of tweets to keep track of, especially if they're tweeting every day or several times a day. So maybe you only want to see your top five uh, job search sites. You could go ahead and make a list with them. And then when you only want to look at jobs, go to that list and you don't have to see the tweets of the 150 people that you're following. Okay, so Twitter chats, um, what are they? Essentially, people will meet on Twitter at a pre-agreed time, uh, let's say 7 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday, and they will talk about that profession or something to do with that profession. It could be marketing or PR. Uh, usually, there will be questions that are gathered ahead of time, and then they'll be tweeted out maybe every 10 minutes. And so people will read the tweets, and then they'll respond and they'll use a hashtag so that all of the tweets stay together. You put on a hashtag, you can read what everybody's written. And it just gives you a good overview of what people are thinking when it comes to current issues, um, such as privacy or pay, or if you're in the education field, you know, how are teachers dealing with COVID? Um, how are they dealing with having to do some classes on Zoom and some classes in person? 
Uh, it's a good way to talk to your colleagues, you know, especially now with less things being done in person. So I would definitely recommend it. Now you could always start off and kind of lurk if you don't want to, you know, tweet anything yet. Maybe you feel self-conscious. There's a lot of people participating. Just read the hashtag, see what people are saying. You could do that for a few weeks. So I typed in teacher Twitter chats and I got uh, a ton of results. So you could do this with pretty much any profession and I guarantee you at least a few will pop up. So if I was a teacher, I would probably hit that first link and then see what chats are interesting because they're going to be divided up into different categories. There'll be chats for middle school teachers and chats for elementary teachers and special ed teachers, college teachers and computer teachers and um, first year teachers, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll see a bunch of different categories. All right, so some tips if you decide to do Twitter chat, uh, retweet others or tweet them directly if you agree with their point. Don't forget to use the hashtag. Otherwise, uh, what you're saying is just gonna go out there and people aren't gonna read it because they're clicking on the hashtag. And so they're gonna miss anything you have to say. Um, if there's a format that you notice everyone's using, try to stick to the format. Uh, if you're answering a question, do they want you to put A1 or number one? Do they not care? Uh, the main thing on that is to use the hashtag. That's probably the number one thing. And then again, you know, you can hang back at first if you're not sure what to do, how the chat works, uh, see what other people are saying, and then, you know, retweet someone one night, maybe the next night you do it, you tweet out one sentence, or I agree, or good point, or something like that. You know, again, you could always lurk, you don't have to participate, but if you do participate, it's a good chance to network, you might get added to other people's lists, uh, someone might follow you that's in the industry and vice versa. Okay, so a lot of professional conferences have a Twitter hashtag. Uh, if you click on the hashtag, you can view the conversations that industry professionals are having. And by the way, you might know this already, but while you're a student is a good time to try to go to conferences. Uh, not so much right now, but when conferences start happening again, I would recommend looking into it because students usually get a pretty hefty discount. And it also looks really good on your resume if you end up presenting at a conference. So this is an example of a conference hashtag, EDUCAUSE19. And anything under that hashtag that goes with the conference is gonna come up, pictures, uh, people commenting on the sessions. Uh, sometimes you might see a complaint about a hotel, you know, just all kinds of stuff or tips. Here's where the good food is. You should try this restaurant. So uh, they could be really helpful. And even if you're not at the conference, I'm always interested to see what people are talking about. And so sometimes I will start following people that I've never heard of before, but now I know who they are because they tweeted at the conference. So things to tweet about, you could retweet industry articles, uh, professional tweets by other people, current events, how they're affecting your industry. You could also tweet about your classes related to your career field, um, projects you're working on, conferences you've been to, uh, your opinion on different developments. For example, right now, how is COVID affecting your particular field? So some things you might wanna watch out for are uh, not using text speak. I wouldn't say ever, ever, just uh, keep in mind that you've got people of different age groups on Twitter. And so you might have people that are older and they may or may not know all your abbreviations. So just something to keep in mind. Um, be careful about getting political just because, you know, a potential employer might be looking over your feed. They may or may not agree with your opinion. Uh, be careful about being negative. It's really easy to do, but again, if an employer is looking over your Twitter feed, you don't want them to feel like, man, this person kind of has a negative attitude. They don't really seem happy whenever they're talking about their profession or their field. So you don't have to be fake and Pollyanna, but you kind of want to be somewhere in the middle, uh, show enthusiasm, give other people compliments, uh, go through Twitter chats. And, uh, you know, future employers may look at your account. Does that mean you can never get personal? You can never say, oh, I went hiking or here's my cat. No, it doesn't mean that. It just means, uh, you know, be careful. And 
uh, if it's something that you wouldn't want to be asked about in an interview, then you know maybe think about not tweeting it or uh, putting it on a separate account. So if you decide to go with Twitter, uh, something you might want to do is spend a few minutes a day on it or maybe an hour a week. Um, Twitter is like Instagram and Facebook in that it's real easy to start scrolling and then the next thing you know an hour's gone by and you're like wait what am I even doing so maybe time yourself so you don't spend too much time on there uh, don't worry about your follower count just uh, keep interacting with people uh, tweet articles that are interesting and then eventually more people will start will start following you and so it won't be an issue. Also, employers, they're not going to look at how many people are following you. They're mainly going to look at, uh, at your content. OK, so you can do job searches on Twitter. I would suggest using keywords and hashtags, uh, engineering, hashtag jobs, or engineering jobs, teaching jobs, PR jobs, IT jobs, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You could find uh, people to follow. You could find companies to follow. And there's lots of accounts that all they do is tweet out jobs. Now, most of these jobs are going to be nationwide. So if you want jobs only from a specific area, then you might want to look for an account called you know, DFW Jobs or something like that, because most of these are going to be uh, across the country. OK, so some things to think about. Make sure your account looks professional. Uh, has a picture of you, it uh, you know, has where you're going to school, uh, what field you're majoring in, what you're interested in. Think about exploring Twitter lists. They could save you a lot of time. And then I would definitely recommend uh, looking up Twitter chats. They're a good way to network and kind of get your name out there. And then people that are really interested in the field will know who you are. They might end up following you. Um, who knows, you might end up collaborating on a project with them someday or maybe you'll present with them at a conference a lot of people do that and they don't meet the person until they get to the conference so that's definitely something that you can do if you're interested in it all right so if you have any questions about this there's my contact information that's my email and my office phone the library is also on twitter we would love it if you followed us uh, we're at tarleton live and you can just keep up on what's happening, uh, any events we're having, uh, new items we've gotten, things like that. So uh, to sum up, I would say you don't have to do Twitter, um, but if you do, it could definitely be worth your time. And it's just a good tool to have in your toolbox. Uh, it might be something that after you get a job that you want, you, know, you don't spend as much time on there and that's perfectly okay. So that's my part. I'm going to go ahead and hand this off to Rachel. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Rachel Snyder, and I'm the Career Development Coordinator over at the College of Business. And I am going to um, be going over LinkedIn today. So I'm going to jump over and share my screen. This is just my LinkedIn account. Um, and we're going to go through some of the basics of LinkedIn, as well as how to specifically to search for jobs on LinkedIn. So um, just for those who are really unfamiliar with this platform, this is social media for professionals, right? LinkedIn is a little bit like Facebook, uh, but it is for your professional network. So when you create your account, you're going to have a profile. And I'm going to spend a couple of moments going over the basics of that. Um, a couple of key things to remember. You want to make sure that you have a good professional headshot, okay? So that means um, you're in professional attire, you're smiling, it's not a selfie, um, you're not in a group photo. Uh, you also usually want to have a neutral background. In my case, I did go for a purple background because I work at Tarleton State University, so it's fitting. So if you work somewhere that has kind of a color associated with the brand, that color may be good to have in the background of your headshot. Um, additionally, you'll have the option to select a background photo. Um, I recommend you can pick something a little creative, just make sure that it's relevant. Uh, this is a Tarleton State University flag, which works because Tarleton is my alma mater and it is where I work currently. Um, and it ties in with my headshot nicely. 
So um, beyond those photos, you're going to have your headline, which is this uh, piece of information right here. And that is what comes up when people search for other people. Um, you're going to see your headshot, your name, and then your headline. Now, LinkedIn will automatically make your current job title your headline, but you don't have to leave it there. Um, I would recommend that you actually do some changing. You'll see mine says Career Development Coordinator, comma, Tarleton State University. Um, if you are currently working and you're not looking for jobs, you do want to have probably your job title in there somewhere, just so that way um, people can see who you are and what you do, but you can add more. I put connecting students to opportunities and employers to talent, just to give a little bit of description of what it is that I do. Now, if you are a student and you don't currently have a job, maybe you're looking for that first job, um, you can include things like your major, right? Maybe engineering major, biology major. Um, and you can include a phrase such as open to opportunities in uh, whatever field you wanna go into. Or maybe you can say looking for management internship or management training program, just to um, show people who are looking at your profile what it is that you're looking to do. Uh, you can add industry keywords, important skills, different things like that. Um, just remember that this is short, it is brief, it, um, and the end of it will probably be cut off depending on how much text you have in that. So I would say those are some of the most important things that you can do. Make sure you have a good headshot, make sure you have a good headline, and then be sure to fill out your profile, okay? And that starts with the settings. If you are currently looking for work, set the settings so that recruiters can see you. I'm not going to go too much in depth on the rest of the profile, but I am gonna hit on a couple of quick things. And if you are interested in learning how to build out your profile, we do have a series of LinkedIn videos on our YouTube channel, Tarleton Careers. So you can find more information there. Um, but the next thing you need to do is make sure that you have a good about section, fill it out fully. Make sure that your about section is about more than just your current job description or just a couple of sentences. This can be pretty robust. Um, you wanna write in complete sentences generally and the first person. Those are some of the top tips that you'll see. Um, additionally, you can do some creative things to draw people in. If you enjoy writing, this is a place you can express some creativity. Make sure that you include uh, items such as important skills, industry keywords, um, what sets you apart in your field, uh, or anything else an employer might want to know. And as you'll see on mine, I actually used a few different styles. I've written in a short paragraphs. I've also made lists and used bullet points. And that can help uh, a reader keep reading throughout your profile section because it keeps them engaged. So beyond that, just make sure to fill out every section, all right? So you wanna include your experience, which is your past work experience. Don't just list the job, include information. Um, if you can, you can include media. For example, I've included videos that I've shot in the past. I uploaded them into LinkedIn. And then you wanna include your education, fill that out fully. You can include certifications, licenses, skills, endorsements accomplishments. Um, the list just kind of goes on. So the most important thing to keep in mind is that you want to fill this out fully. Make sure that everything that's on your resume is also on LinkedIn, and then you can add some more because you're not limited to a certain amount of pages on LinkedIn. So again, if you want more information about how to develop your profile, we've got a video and a workshop on that. Um, but those are just a few tips to get you started. Now, let's talk a little bit about how to connect with people on LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn makes it really easy. You can go to my network and then you will see a lot of people that might be recommended as connections for you. Now, if you're going to connect with someone, I highly recommend that you include a personalized message uh, that says, hi, you know, this is our connection. Um, I would love to connect with you, right? Maybe you went to the class with them. Maybe they were your professor or a former employer, different things like that. Uh, so that's how you can engage with people pretty easily on LinkedIn. Also make sure that you post regularly. The way that you get seen more often is by posting more often. So generally it is recommended to post once a day per business day. So that's five times a week. Uh, you can post on a lot of different topics. Remember that LinkedIn is a professional website. So you don't, this isn't the place to talk about your hiking trip last weekend or um, about 
what you ate last week, different things like that. But you can include posts on industry news, maybe company news. I share a lot of Tarleton press releases on my LinkedIn. So that's something you can do as well as a student. Uh, you can talk about what you're learning in class as it pertains to the field that you want to go into. Maybe share special achievements. Uh, you can give conversation starters, different topics like that. So that is how you can get started with engaging with people on LinkedIn. And that is important because um, that's how you're going to build that network and start to make those connections that may help you get a job in the future. But I am going to spend the rest of this time talking more specifically about how to look for jobs on LinkedIn. So they do have a handy jobs tab at the top of their website. So you're going to click on that and you will see that there are a lot of unique features here that will be helpful to you. You can save specific job searches so that way you can run them again and again and see what the new job posts are. You can save jobs to look at later. Maybe you're, you're just going through and you're just gonna save all the jobs that you're interested in applying for and then apply for them all at once, right? So that's a way that can help keep you organized. But the best part about the LinkedIn job search feature is the advanced filters. So the filters are going to keep you from having 3000 jobs that you might be interested in and maybe narrow it down to the 30 that you definitely are interested in. So I'm gonna run a sample search just to show you how this will work. Let's start um, first by naming a town. Let's say I know I wanna work in Fort Worth. I'm gonna run that just so that way I have that at the top. And then I am actually going to go over to this all filters button. And this is where the magic happens. So you have a lot of options when it comes to the filters. You can search by a specific job title up here. If you know you specifically wanna be say an English teacher, you could just search for that there or you can start to narrow it down this way. You can include things such as when it was, when the job was posted, the experience level. This can be especially helpful if you're looking for an internship, um, the company specifically, job types, whether you're looking for an internship, full-time job, part-time job. A new feature that I've seen show up is remote. Since a lot of people are working remotely right now, that might be important to you during this time. And then there are some specific to LinkedIn features such as easy apply, which means you can apply through LinkedIn. Uh, if there are under 10 applicants, if it's in your network, which means someone you know works there and uh, is connected to you in that way. And then you can look at distance and location, industry, job function, or title. So here's the specific example I wanna give you. Let's say I know I want to go into human resources in the Fort Worth area. So. I'm going to select entry level because I'm going to be a new graduate um, and I know that's where I will fit in with my skill set. So, and I'm, oh, I'm also going to go ahead and change it to the past month because you'll see that there is a difference in over 10,000 jobs there. And sometimes people post jobs and they might forget that they posted it and so it stays there forever. And so this is just going to help start to narrow that down a little bit. Now, the difference between job function and industry is subtle but important. Uh, if I know that I want to go into human resources, if I search for that as a job function, that means I could go into human resources at a school district, um, at an accounting firm, at a university, at a hospital, or at another medical care facility, right? I can go into a lot of different industries within human resources. But if I specifically go into the human resources industry, then I'm gonna be working at a company where human resources, right, is, is the focus of their business, not something like a school district. So I know that I want to look for human resources as the job function. Now, I've just added a couple of quick filters, but I'm already gonna to start to see those results narrowed down. Oh, and it did automatically select within 25 miles of the city, so you can adjust that based on how far you're willing to commute. Note that there will be some that are promoted. That doesn't mean that they are most relevant. It means that they were they paid to be put at the top. So you'll see that you're going to see a lot of positions that are relevant to you, such as HR coordinator, HR analyst one, a fully remote HR coordinator, recruiting coordinator. 
right? So you'll see these all fall under human resources. They have some different job titles. They have some different names. So if you're unsure if something is relevant to what you want to do, you'll just click on it, right? So I'm going to press staffing coordinator. So maybe I don't know what exactly that means. What then you'll do is you will just scroll down and read the job description. Most jobs on LinkedIn are going to be posted with fairly, fairly long job descriptions. And they will also include things like how many applicants they have and if you have any connections with that company. All right, so you'll see there, we've got required experience and other information down here. You can even learn more about the company itself, which I would really recommend doing. So those are some of the basic ways that you can start to use the job search filter on LinkedIn. And again, you can say, that's where you'll save the job if you want to look at it later. Maybe you don't wanna apply right now, you wanna do some more research and get back to it later. You'll just press the save button and then you can access it later. So let's clear all of our searches and let's run through um, kind of a different type of search. I am going to search now for a company. Maybe I, I kind of know what I wanna do. I don't know exactly what I wanna do, but I know where I'm interested in working, okay? Maybe I did an internship at McCoy's and I know I might wanna work there after graduation. So I'm gonna search McCoy. Oops, I'm still in the jobs. That's also remember, if you're gonna search for a company, go to where you can actually search for that company, okay? So you'll see we've got McCoy. And it is McCoy Corporation. See that right there? So we're going to click on that and that's going to take you to the business page. And then usually, especially if it's a bigger company, they can post their jobs on this page. I did take you to McCoy's as a bit of a trick to show you that they actually don't have jobs posted on LinkedIn. Uh, that doesn't mean that they don't have jobs available. What they actually want you to do is go to their website and apply directly on their website. So you may go to LinkedIn, look up a company, and there are no jobs listed, and that's okay. It doesn't mean they're not hiring. It just means you need to check at another location. On the other hand, I know that Enterprise has jobs listed on their website. So we've got Enterprise Rent-A-Car, and they've got their jobs listed here, okay? They have 938 job openings. That's a lot. Now this is a national company. So these are going to be in a lot of different locations. So you can search for something like Fort Worth and then get the jobs in the Fort Worth area. Right, right now they're hiring for their management trainee program in Fort Worth. So if you know you wanna work for a specific company, that's a way that you can look for jobs besides using this jobs tab right there. One other thing that I want to talk about is if you aren't sure what kind of job you want to go to um, and you're not sure where to find more information, LinkedIn can actually be really beneficial for finding information out about different careers. Uh, and one of the ways that you can do that is by making connections on LinkedIn and then messaging them and asking questions, right? So for example, Carleton State University has a LinkedIn page. And the alumni are connected on that Tarleton page. You can scroll down and you'll see that there's an alumni tab right here. And so then you're going to see all of the alumni that are connected on LinkedIn to Tarleton. And so these are people that you kind of automatically have a connection with because you went to the same school. So you can connect with people who are in the industry that you want to go into and say, hey, you know, I'm a student at Tarleton trying to decide what to do next. Your field looks really interesting and I'd love to ask you some questions to learn more about it. So let's say I know I'm interested in being a financial analyst. I typed in title and then a colon and financial analyst. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna pull up people who have financial analyst in their job title. And so that pulls up a much smaller number of people than thousands, right? We've got 202. And so these are all people who have financial analyst as a job title, and I can reach out to some of them and ask them questions, maybe look for someone that I have lots of shared connections with, 
or I can see that they work at a company that I'm interested in working for, different things like that. And then it's just a matter of connecting with and messaging those people. And if you want to maybe potentially meet them in person, you can narrow it down further by where they live, right? Let's say you know that you live, we'll stick with the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So that narrows it down further, 216 people, and you can keep narrowing it down from there. You can also narrow it down by company and other features like that. Now, I will let you know, we do have several LinkedIn workshops coming up that are uh, available via Zoom on our website. Uh, we also have the videos that I mentioned earlier. We go over how to build out your profile, how to connect with people and how to search for jobs. Um, and of course, you are always welcome to stop by our Career Cafe. It is located in the Thompson Student Center, room 218. We also have a Zoom Career Cafe, if you would rather come virtually. Um, and the times for when those are open are located on our website. So thank you so much. I hope that you learned something about LinkedIn today and that you learned something about Twitter and how you can use that for your career exploration.